Welcome back students. In this lecture we're going to do some analysis involving point and polygon problems. The basic layout is this. A client builds linear projects in this area in which we have data on some wildlife. They want us to build a planning tool that will let them determine what types of environmental constraints that they might encounter with a new project. So we want to let them draw a line on the map representing the proposed route and then get a report about the potential impacts that might affect the project. So this is conceptually similar to the last section where we dropped a marker and then reported the nearest constraints to that marker. But because we're dealing with a line now, the problem becomes infinitely more complicated. Instead of a simple distance and direction to the nearest eagle nest, we want to know how many of each type of eagle's nest are within a half mile of the entire route. Because these may prevent work within the eagle nest buffer area during the nesting season. More importantly, we may want to know how many of these nests are active and represent a definite closure and which are inactive and thus only represent a potential closure and some expenses from monitoring the nest in case it becomes active. But Turf has some methods that may help us. The within method takes a feature collection of points and a feature collection of polygons and returns a subset of the original feature collection of points that fall within any of the polygons. So we could create a half mile buffer around the line and use that with the eagle points to get the subset of eagle nests that are within half mile of the proposed project. And then we could loop through that collection of points and count how many of them are active nests and how many of them are inactive. Turf also provides another very handy method called collect. The collect method takes a feature collection of polygons and a feature collection of points. But collect doesn't return points. Instead, you pass it a third parameter the name of a property of the points feature class that you want to collect, and finally a fourth parameter, the name of a property in the polygons that will hold the collection. This property doesn't have to exist. If it doesn't exist, Turf will add it to the properties, and this property will hold an array of all the values of the property you specified of all the points within that polygon. And we're only going to have one polygon, the buffered line, we will collect the status attribute of all the eagle nest points that fall within that half mile buffer. And this points to an advantage that storing data in GeoJSON has over traditional flat table storage formats such as shapefiles and even geodatabases. You can't store an array of values in a database field, so this solution would be much harder to implement. But in GeoJSON, a property can hold anything, including arrays and objects, which can themselves hold arrays and objects, so it's a very flexible data storage format. There's also a helper method that we'll need. It's a constructor method for feature collections. It simply takes an array of features and turns them into a feature collection. And we'll need this because the output of the buffer method is a single feature, but the collect method requires a feature collection as input. So we'll take that output of the buffer method and turn it into a feature collection that has only one feature. Now we can write a wrapper for the collect method that does all of this in one function. It would take as inputs a line, a buffer distance, a point feature class, and the name of a property in that point feature class. The pseudocode looks like this. First we declare the function and its parameters. Next we buffer the line by the specified distance. Then we convert the buffer, which is a single geometry, to a feature class so we can use it in collect. Next we call the collect method itself to create an array of properties in the line buffer feature. And finally, we return the buffered line. And we'll be able to use this summarized point by line function for raptor nest as well. So that's one reason why we're making it very general. And now that we have an array containing the status of all the nests within half mile of the line, we need to summarize that array. And we'll write a generalized function that will do that. It will return a two-dimensional array. The first array will contain unique values of the array element. And the second array, which will have the same number and the same indexing, will hold a count of each unique element in the array. So with pseudocode again, we'll write a function that takes a single array. The first thing it would do is create an empty array to hold unique values, and another empty array to hold a count of those unique values. Then we'll loop through the array and check each value. If the element doesn't exist in the unique value array, we need to add it to the unique value array, and add a value of 1 to the count array. If the element already exists in the unique value array, then we need to get the index of that value in the unique array and increment the count array at that index by 1. So we're going to increment the element in the count array that corresponds to the property value in the unique value array. And finally, we're going to return a two-dimensional array that contains both the unique values and the count of those unique values. In the case of our eagle array, there will only potentially be two unique values, active nest and inactive location, and we'll get a count of each. 
Now the first thing I'm going to do is modify our code to allow the user to draw a line. And then after that you may want to pause the video and try to write your own functions for summarized points by a line based on the pseudocode I just provided. And then check back in to see how I did it. Maybe some of you will teach me something. Okay, in the last section we had limited the draw control to only allow drawing of markers. We're going to change that now to allow the drawing of polylines because we want the user to be able to draw a line that we're going to analyze for environmental constraints. But now on the draw created event of my map, we don't know what the user is going to draw. If he's going to draw a marker or if she's going to draw a line. So we have to figure that out. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, we have our event object E. And it turns out that the event object has a property called layer type. And that layer type contains a string telling us what kind of geometry the user just created. So we can use a switch statement to test that. And that's just e dot layer type. And then if it's a marker, we already have a bunch of code to handle that case. We'll stick a break statement in here just for fun. And it might also be a polyline. And if that's the case for right now, we're just going to alert, you just drew a polyline, and break. All right, now all this code down here was run for a marker when a marker was created. I'm just going to cut this out and paste it into the marker case. And I'll tab everything over just to make it look good. All right, so that code's still going to execute, but now it's only going to execute if the user draws a marker. If he draws a polyline, then we'll get an alert. Let's see if this works. Okay, we have the line button available to us now. And if we click it, when we finish, we get an alert. So that's all wired up and working right. And our marker element still works, so we're all good. Now we have an event to handle drawing a polygon. So if you want, you can pause this lecture here and write some code in that event to find out how many eagles nests are within a half mile of that polyline. If you can't figure it out, don't worry. As soon as you unpause it, I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is write our generalized function down here at the bottom. The first one is going to be called summarize points by line. And it's going to take a line, a radius for the buffer, a feature class of points, and the name of a property as a string. That's the property that we want to collect. Then I'm first going to create the buffer. We'll call that variable buff. And that's going to be set to the output of the turf buffer method. And that buffer method is going to take the line as the input, the radius as the input, and we have to give it units. We probably don't have to because I believe kilometers is the default, but it's going to be very explicit just to make sure that everything is clear. Now this buff is a polygon feature, but we actually need it to be a feature collection for the collect method. So we can do that by setting buff equal to the output of the turf feature collection method and passing it as input an array that only contains the buffer polygon. Then we'll also set buff equal to the output of the turf collect method. That takes a feature collection of polygons. That's buff, that's what we just created. A feature collection of points that was input as a parameter to the function. A property name for, for the point feature collection that we want to summarize. And then a name for the property in the output polygon feature collection It's going to hold the values. And that we'll call the same name as the property that was input, but we're going to suffix it with the word vals. In the case that we're going to use this for the first time, property is going to be status in the output feature collection polygon which is a buffer polygon is going to have a property called status vals and it's going to be an array that holds the value of the status property for every point within the polygon and then we'll simply return that feature collection now let's write our other function for summarizing arrays we'll call it summarize array so we know exactly what it means it's going to take an array as a parameter and we're just going to call that array ar first thing we'll do is declare a variable to hold the unique property values and we'll make that empty to start with and we'll create another one that's going to hold the count values for those unique values of the property and then we'll set up a loop probably do this in our sleep by now. 
uh, is less than ar dot length i plus plus. And inside that loop, we'll create a variable called idx for index, and we'll set that to the index in the unique array that has a value of the current element in the array. Now, if it's not found, it's going to be negative one. So let's handle that case first. If idx is less than zero, then that value of the current element in the array is not found in the unique array, so we need to add it. And we do that using the arrays push method. So we're pushing the value of the current element, and we're also going to push the number one to the AR count array, because it's the first time we found it, so it has a count of one. Now we'll handle the case where it is found, and that's simply going to be AR count with an index of IDX, and we'll increment that by one. And then we simply need to return a two-dimensional array. The first one is holding the unique values, and the second one's holding the count. Clear as mud, huh? I hope this makes sense to you, because we're going to be doing something similar throughout the rest of this course. Okay, so we have our summarized points by line, and we have our summarized array functions written. Now let's go up to the event handler for the line draw, and we'll use those functions that we just created. So in the case of a polyline, we'll create a variable to hold the output from the collect function. We'll just call that collect eagle. And that's going to be set to the output of summarized points by line. And the first thing I'm going to pass it is the line. Where does the line come from? Well, we need to make it here. So the variable line equals e layer dot to geojson. So this is going to be the line that the user just drew, and it's handed to us in the event object of the draw created event. Now the next thing we need to do is pass it a distance. It's going to be 0 0.8. 0.8 kilometers is half a mile. And we'll pass it layer eagle. We're going to convert that to GeoJSON too because we're working with turf. And turf wants everything in GeoJSON. And then we're going to hand it a property. And that property is going to be the status property. Let's see how this works now. But first we're going to console log the eagle collection so we can take a look at it and see what's actually in that and then we don't need this you just drew a polyline but what we do need is to add this line layer to the drawn items feature group just so it stays on the map Let's see that needs to be uh, parentheses all right Let's see how we are with that before we do the last step I think something's not happening again Let's take a look. Unexpected token, line 835. Looks like I have one too many pluses. Let's go down to line 835. Okay, we got further than we did last time. Let's draw a line. And we got some errors. Layer eagle is not defined. Of course not. The name of the layer is eagle nests. All right. It's going to work this time, I promise. I shouldn't make promises like that that I'm not sure if I can keep. I should say, I hope it will work this time. Right? All right. Let's do something where we know what the answer will be. We'll draw a line that comes through these two active nests and through this one. So three active nests and one inactive nest. Line 402. It's not a function. Of course it's not. What I need to do is call the add layer method. But before we save this and try and run it again, let's take a look at what we got output. We have feature collection. It's an array of features. It has one object. That's the buffer that we created. And it should have some properties. One of that properties is status vals, just like we said. And it has four values, three active nest, one inactive nest. So it's working. The only thing that didn't work was adding a line to the drawn items feature group. And that's pretty trivial. Let's make sure I saved it. Go back. And let's draw a line again that goes through one inactive nest and two active nests. 
Ah, jeez. Let's check our output again first. Properties, status values. So two active nests, one inactive nest. So again, that's working. We just need, yeah, that needs to be a capital L. Let's go ahead, though, and get our summary array. We'll call this sum eagle. And we're going to call the summarize array function. And it's just going to get one array. And what array is that going to be? Well, we have col eagle. That's a feature class. So it has a features property. That features property is an array that only has one feature in it. So we'll reference that feature using the zero index. And then that feature has a properties property. And one of those properties is an array, that's the one we want to look at, called status files. So I think that'll work. Let's just console log out some eagle this time. And then I'm just going to draw a line through here, through this one inactive nest, and two active nests. And here's our sum eagle. It's got two arrays. Each array has two elements in it. The first array has the elements active nest and inactive location. The second array has the counts, two and one. Two active nests, one inactive location. So it works. Now all we have to do is output that. I think we're going to output it to a pop-up. Let's do that. We'll get rid of this console log. We'll create a string called string pop-up. And it's going to say eagles, and then a new line, and then a space. And then we'll add in... Actually, let's just do eagles for now. Then we're going to loop through the summarize array. Again, we can probably do this by heart now. We'll set our counter variable to zero. Condition is going to be i is less than some eagle, the first array in some eagle. They both have the same length though, so it doesn't matter. i plus plus. So it's going to go through each of the unique values, and for each of the unique values, we'll add to the pop up string some text. First, it's going to be a line break, then a space. And then the value of the unique array, that's the first array in some eagle, and the ith element in that array. Then we're going to add a semicolon and another space, and we'll do the same thing, except this time it's going to be the ith element of the second array, which is a counter array. I'm going to declare this with a variable keyword here. And then I just need to bind a pop up the layer that we're adding to the drawn items feature group and pass a string to that. All right, let's see how many stupid spelling mistakes I've made this time. I shouldn't say that. Let's see how many opportunities I have to learn and become a better programmer this time. I got a syntax error. Line 403. It looks like I have a comma there instead of a semicolon. There is one opportunity to learn how to be a better programmer. Let's see if I have any more. Well, so far so good. Let's see, I'm going to go through one inactive nest, an active nest, another active nest, an inactive nest, and an active nest. So two inactive nests and three active nests. Let's see if that's what it tells us. If I click on the line, now I get a pop-up. It tells us exactly that. Two inactive locations and three active nests. So everything's working. We're going to continue extending this in the next lecture. We'll add raptor nests to this. That's going to be a little bit complicated because raptor nests have two species, and the species have different buffer distances. And so your assignment for tonight is to think about that, and think about how you'll go about finding out how many Swainson's hawks are within a quarter mile, and how many red tail hawks are within a third of a mile from this line. You can go ahead and code that up if you want. I'll show you how I do it in the next lecture. We'll see you then.